The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. A crowd lined the bank and cheered wildly. As the riverboat... The Bonanza Belle steamed into the landing at White Horse on her maiden voyage. She was the first riverboat to come into the Yukon Territory, bringing mail and carrying freight into the interior, where only dogs and mule teams had been used. It was a great event, and everyone was jubilant except two men, who sat away from the crowd on the riverbank and looked on bitterly. This is a bad day for us. It sure ain't our ship coming in. Well... This means the end of our freight business. One more season, we could retire. With that floating tub cutting the rates in half, we ain't got a chance. Hope she runs aground or busts a boiler this first trip. Jake, that's an idea. Huh? Why couldn't we see to it she does run aground or bust a boiler or something? I mean, wreck her some way? Sure. But Pete, wrecking a boat, someone might get killed. They don't care whether they wreck us or not. Of course, we could haul the freight for the same rates they're charging. Do it quicker with mules. I ain't working for that kind of money. This business was a gold mine. It's going to keep on being one. Yeah, but... We could, uh, blow her up. That's it. Dynamite. You mean here? At the dock? Nah. We gotta make it look as if she blew up herself on the way to die. What are you gonna do? Shoot a cannonball at her from the riverbank? A load of dynamite put somewhere near her engine. People would think it blew up. They'd never give the steamship company another pound of freight. But how you gonna get it there? People will be gaping at her all night long, probably. I'll get on her some way and hide. I could plant the stuff. Drop off somewhere along the river and swim to shore. You can meet me. It'd blow you to shore, probably, you darn fool. How you going? Now, listen, you dummy. You don't think I'd be fool enough to blow it up with me on it, do you? I could put a time fuse on the dynamite. A candle that'll burn down to the fuse in about 15 minutes. I don't like it. You wouldn't have to do anything but meet me. You could be at Fox River. The boat ought to get there about daylight, day after tomorrow. Could you swim that far to shore? The water's cold, don't sure, forget. Sure, sure. River ain't very wide there. I'll jump off when nobody's looking. They'll all be sleeping anyhow. But Pete, uh, what if they find out the boat was blown up? What if they do? You bring dry clothes? We'll be in the Moose Yard trading post in a few hours. Nobody will know we were near the board. It'd sure stop the Bonanza Bell from hauling freight this season. When we're through with her, there won't be enough of it left to repair. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was greeted warmly by Captain Douglas as he boarded the Bonanza Bell the following morning with his huge lead dog, King, at his side. Morning, Sergeant! Hello, King. Hello, Captain. It's like a fine day for the trip. I didn't know whether your invitation to go to Dawson included my dog or not. Why, of course it does. I can't imagine one of you without the other. This is the first time King's ever been on a big boat like this. Hope he doesn't get seasick. <laughs> oh, there's no danger of that. Now, uh, we're almost ready to cast off, Sergeant. You want to look around the boat a little? Oh, yes, thanks. We'll stroll around. We'll make King feel more at home after we get going. See you later, Captain. All right, Sergeant. Come on, King. Quite a sight, huh, Sergeant? All them people cheering. Ain't this a fine boat? It certainly is. Here we go. Say, where's that door? 
Doggy. Oh, he'll be all right. Guess he's just looking around the Bonanza Bell. As Preston watched the crowd on the dock waving and cheering, King wandered into the cabin. Suddenly his eye caught the furtive movement of a man who slipped from behind some baggage and stole down the companionway. King followed him curiously, but stopped with a snarl as the man threw a stick at him. Get back there, you must quit following me. Back a step! Hey, King! Where are you, fella? What are you doing down there, boy? Come on, King, come up here! Well, investigating the boat, huh? Guess you must have gone on a tour inspection. Come on, fella. We better find our cabin. Dawn was breaking over the Yukon. The little cabin in which Preston slept was stuffy, and King was restless. The sound of the engines and the close quarters worried him, and he longed for the open air. Preston stirred a little in his sleep, and the big dog walked over and stood beside the bunk. He whined, and as Preston's eyes opened a little, he pawed at him and barked. King, go to sleep, boy. It's not time to get up yet. Keep still. You want to wake up everybody on the boat? Well, I suppose I better take you up on deck. Will I put out my shoes? <laughs> Guess I should have known better to bring you along. You don't like this stuffy cabin. Well, can't say I blame you, fella. I don't like it either. Come on, boy. I'll walk you around the deck for a while. Out you go, fella. Quiet. What do you think you are, in the woods? Be still. It's too early for that. This early morning air is nice. Guess you were right, fella. It would be a shame to miss a morning like this on the river. Feel better out here, don't you, boy? What was that? It looked like a man. It is a man. He's gone overboard. Man overboard! Up the boat! Man overboard! Better go after him, King. Come on, fella. Down these stairs. Come on, boy. Hurry. There he is. We better grab him in the dinghy. All right, King. In the water, fella. Get him. Hey, what you doing? My dog will hold him up until we get to him. Let me go with you in that boat. All right. Quick, into the boat. I'll take an oar. Please reached him. Did you see him go in? Yes. Heard a splash while I was walking my dog on deck. But look, he's fighting King away. We're almost to him. Can you grab him? I'll get him. Get away, you Go away. Stop picking that dog. He's trying to help you. All right, Sergeant. Grab him. Come on, you. What? It's Pete Stevens. Come on, into the boat. Get that dog away. Come on. Uh, there you are. All right, King. Come on, boy. Into the boat. Oh, there you are, fella. Get out, everybody. Hey, you watch out. You almost tipped us over. Uh, I don't want to do that. Quiet, King. Lie down. I didn't know you were on this boat, Pete. How'd you happen to fall overboard? Uh, I guess I leaned too far over the railing. Got busy. Oh. I don't remember seeing you come on board. You're freezing, man. Uh, take the oar, Jones. Yeah. Here, put this coat around you. We'll get some dry clothes for you as soon as we get aboard. That dog, you... you can't blame him for not liking you. He was kicking at him when he tried to rescue you. Ahoy there! Get this way! Pete stood before the captain on deck. He was chattering with cold, and there was a desperate, frightened look on his face. His hands twitched nervously, and his eyes darted from side to side. 
Well, what happened? Well, this man got dizzy and fell overboard, sir. Better take him below and get some dry clothes on him. I have something that'll fit him, Captain. Come on, Pete. No, no, I... Hey, watch him. He's headed for the rail. No, you don't. What's the matter with you, man? Are you crazy? Let me go. Let me go, I say. Why, he's panicking. Better get some dry clothes on him and lock him up. Let me go. I am not letting you go. You're coming below with me. All right. All right, just let me go. I'll go with you. Now, watch yourself, then. Keep an eye on him, King. Yes, He's let go of me for a minute, huh? I'll be all right. I guess he lost his head. He'll be all right now. Yeah. Well, go away and let me alone. Yeah, all right, Pete. But we're not leaving you alone. You're coming down with me and getting those wet clothes off. The time. It's almost time. No, no. He's running down the companionway. After him. King, get him, boy. What's the matter with that crazy galoon? Stop, you crazy loon! He's running towards the engine room. King will catch him. Get away from me, huh? Stop! Take him off me! Stop! I'll be killed! Kill that thing! Take him off me! All right, King, back! What's the matter with you, Pete? The boat, the cable, burn it down. Let me go, we've blown to pieces. What candle? What are you talking about? In the coal. Let me go! He was heading for that coal trail, and King caught him. Come on, Jones. Watch that man, King. Over there. There is a candle. Wait, I'll get it. Here it is. I've got it. There. It's almost burned down. Was he trying to set the coal on fire or something? No. This looks like a time fuse. This candle would have lighted it. Uh, there's something covered with coal here. Yeah. Here it is. Suffering cats. Enough dynamite to blow us to kingdom come. That's right. No wonder he didn't want us to bring him back to this boat. He was trying to get away. You better get this out of here right away. Sure. I'll take Pete up to the captain. Take this dog away from That me. dog's staying right behind you, Pete. Get going. The time bomb in the coal? How did he get it there without someone seeing him? All right, Pete. How did you do it? I taught him. I can't force him to talk before he's tried, Captain. He must have planted it there last night or before the boat started. But but why? Well, you see, Captain Pete here has been hauling freight to Dawson at very high prices. Yes, he was going to stop your competition. He and his partner. His partner. By the way, Pete, where is Jake? He isn't on this boat, that's certain. He ain't in on this. You were trying to get to shore at Fox River. Was he meeting you there? No. You wouldn't try traveling very far in wet clothes. Captain, I wonder if you could put King and me ashore. I have an idea we'll pick Jake up somewhere near the point where Pete tried to leave us. Well, sure we could, Sergeant, but we'll certainly hate to lose such good passengers. Well, we'd like to complete the journey with you, Captain. But duty comes first. If it hadn't been for that dog and you, the Bonanza Bell would be at the bottom of the Yukon. If you'll deliver Pete at headquarters in Dawson, Captain... Everything will be all right. I sure will, Sergeant. And remember, you and King are welcome on the Bonanza Bell any time we're in this territory. Thank you, Captain. Well, Pete, King and I will see you in Dawson when we arrive with your partner. Come on, fella. We have a job to finish. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>